call me Fuego. 93 like me. Fire in the sheets, spending summers on the scene. Quedo, no way home. Bev Hill life on the day. Start slow, build strong, finish strong. And that's the goal here as we head into Erringol for the team Black Cerberus, Black Bay, Black MST. It's time the pace here finish the night off strong here on Aaron Gold, the home of pump g and see if they can turn things around well our angle love it i know you're a fan i'm a fan you're a big fan of finishing the maps off on a wrangle we'll see how this one does go and keeping a keen eye on some of the teams that did perform better on mirror mark i want to check that one out did just see fury keeping an eye on the bridge as i spoke about they're gonna have a difficult time of rotating off safely they've actually elected the moment not to go across the eastern bridge they're going back toward the west either way we'll jump back over to magic and cerberus who have once again run into each other early on in the piece basil is stuck in this building on his own he might have just jumped out the window makes a lot of noise needs the rotation in from his teammates cool coming across subang there as well but Basil, well he didn't jump out of the building he's still holding strong on the stairs and that pick from cool Gonna just relieve a bit of the pressure. Grenade though in hand. Doesn't quite manage to land it. Oh, Basil though from the second floor building gets the elimination. Well, knocked down bleeds onto Salabi. Elimination may follow shortly. Goal from the tree. I'm not sure if anyone's going to buy into Salabi to get the revive. Tonke gets one but goes to run outside the door. Doesn't check his lefts and rights and gets punished. Cerberus say goodnight. And they are on the board. Four kills and subsequently go from three to seven very quickly in the total standings much better for the team with high expectations jordan yeah certainly is honestly xenox where can you really go yes there's a few defilades to play with here but they are running through an absolutely ludicrous crossfire turtle is the first one to go down i'm surprised they haven't lost more than that to be honest to buy but they run into victim rise seymour big spray down he'll get the day in and I think that might be, in fact, the end of Divine. Just one more player left up, and that's Diane. And he doesn't look like he's having a good time here at all. Seymour, not quite landing the shots. It's a bit rough for him. Oh, oh no. How has that happened? Diane, he might even You've actually got to be those. able to get a couple more points on the board here. And maybe even the Rezus. I don't know. Does the rotation come in time here for Victim Rise? No, it doesn't. Grenade does oh fly through. Oh, my God. How do you lose that? One versus two now for Diane. Not going to be able to get the revival to Jay and Nate. Oh. Did get a heal off. Unfortunately, though, is eliminated. Still, yet almost clutching that one up. Division X Gaming's Long K driving around in the fields of Yasnaya by himself at the moment. So many players on the move, and yet very little real estate actually available. Now, that Darcia is going to blow up, but of course, as per the new settings jordan five seconds or so until it yep. actually blows up so you can get a chance to get out of the vehicle fury have got a great position mind you as well to the southwest portion of the zone kind of similar to the gang two of miramar where they have found themselves with a large open patch of area on the southern end of a circle with a bit of elevation they can potentially find some kills over the next 10 minutes or so game home also pretty happy with their position although they do have Clory's at the southern part of Yasnaya. So it's kind of a 3-1 split at the moment, actually, for, for Game Home. I wonder whether or not Clories will actually be able to rejoin the rest of the team or just to provide a bit of an overwatch from the Yasnaya apartments. From the future, we're going to have to deal with Buriram, who do look like they're quite eager to go for a breach. Good tag onto Teddy immediately. Can actually God Meow and Nordra pulling up. And FTF now aware of Buru Ram's position. This is not a team that I'd like to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Especially since they seemingly have found that form, Jordan. They look threatening from game one to where they're at now. Look at that circle shift though, phase four. Day trader, day dreaming right now. They are in a perfect position. Looking to back up game number two of Miramar. Now over to game three of Erangel. Buriram not going to give up on this. And God, yeah, with a knockdown onto Orkarin from the future. They just can't really get out of this situation, you think. They're in more than just a pickle. They are probably just about moments away from being eliminated. Edie gets the fire and they cannot escape. 
what's going to happen. It's reckoning here from Buriram onto from the future. Well, the res has come across, so FTF do still have three to defend with. Nan do watching in case anyone tries to rush into the garage. Buriram have decided they're not interested anymore. They've taken the point, they're out of here. Big grenade lands on top of Zoid, oh. mate. That finishes him off. Bay are here with a vengeance. They've been having a oh. struggle so far. And now they're going to try and get rid of Astra. But what, what is that? that? <laughs> Lixi has just killed himself and Extreme. And that's the end of Astra. Oh, dear. That's, that's astronomical. How the, the ball's that one up. Bay don't even... I don't even think they really get the kill points, really, that they were hoping to get out of that situation. Four kills now for Buriram United. And they've probably got a few more. Coming up very shortly, although Yoshi Mimburi has just caught Edie off guard. Yoshi Mimburi, time to stand up. The MVP of Thailand, who so far failed to live up to expectations in PCS 1. Not really a great start for PCS 2, might I add you as well, Jordan. And just going to back away from Edie. Oh, I don't blame him there, considering how well Buri Ram United are playing right now. Orkaran finally eliminated, but it's Sophia from Bay, who finally, after a couple of games, are on the board. MSC and Buriram are again going to go head to head. Orm for Jukesy. If he wants it, doesn't look like he does. He's going to continue to tap away. Putting in good work is Buriram this game. They have really turned things around from that game. One poor start. Nordra, seat swap. That's going to be the end of Vega God. And just to add insult to injury, he's going to do it again to finish him off. Buriram are just like a roaming pack of wolves right now, driving around the map, killing everything that they run into. MSC are going to really be relying on one remaining player, Yoshimin Buri. Time to slug away in the center of the map and try and get as many placement points out of this game as possible. We are finding another one on to today from the future, who down to just man though. It's taking a surprisingly long time for them to be picked apart. Sophia might yet just find another one here. Got Nordra in the meantime. Bay have done a decent job here of finding some points out on the eastern side of the circle. Nando got way further than I thought he would be able to. Game home, though, now going to be the beneficiaries of that elimination. 11 teams, 31 alive. And phase five coming very, very shortly. Does it stay on day trade? Will they have to move? They've been quite fortunate now for the last couple of circles. Buriram, Ooh. well, they get a reprieve, a very big one considering they're in the blue right now, but now don't have to move very far. Day trade stay in, game home at the yellow is still in as well. Fury have got the work cut out for them along with X Stadium. Yeah, I think Buriram can even play the other side of that road. I'm not sure that they even have to cross at the moment. I'm pretty sure there's a nice defilade for them there if they want it. Day trade also don't have to move though, so they'll be feeling pretty happy. Archangel Predator are the ones that are going to struggle the most. They've got a lot of open ground to cover. And yeah, there is that defilade that I'm talking about here for Buriram. But while it's going to be good for this circle, it's not going to last too long. Fury also will have to move in from their position. And the real estate is looking quite occupied. It's like living in Sydney, Xenox. Fury don't really have too many places that they can move into. Both of these bowls covered. Division X Gaming have got one, XS another. Where does Fury go? There's a little bit of a hill in front of Ronan and Jukesy here, but it looks like they might go over it. If they commit, they're going to run right into Victim Rise. It's a breach, Xenox. Jukesy, oh. has he run someone over? Not quite. Don't think he's managed that, and it's going to be inside. I think he ran over a one for one trade. Jukesy's knocked down. Gen Foss survives for Victim Rise. How many more can he get? Cow got one. Insight's knocked down, though. Can Cow salvage the situation? No, cannot. Unfortunately, Ronan is now the last one alive for Fury. Long K. Seeing this burnt out Darcia, though. Up against Marcus from X Stadium. Long K has been the last one alive for Division X for a while. Oh, what a nade! He gets them both three kills for Division X. The solo Jordan, the one who's been the solo since practically almost the start of the game with a huge double nade. As Archangel Predator now make their push towards the Wizard Tower of Day Trade Gaming. If they're not going to come out of it, they're going to try and force them out. 
Well, there's no other options really for Archangel Predator. A great pick though onto Vernotica. That cancels the crossfire. Very smart. They know that someone could be hiding inside of that blue crate. They pre-nade it, and now Archangel Predator have an easier time of making it into this Wizzy, but it's not going to be an easy time at all, is it? Carves having been knocked down, they're using the smokes for cover. CJ starting to push forward alongside Killer, and they'll look to try and at least confirm that kill that they did get onto the player inside of the crate. That's Venotica finished off for CJ. Killer is knocked by the molly, though, and Day Trade are getting as much as they're giving here. CJ might just burn alive. It does survive inside of that smoke, but feels like a bit of a band-aid situation here for him. It's definitely been a better performance, though, from a couple of the teams that we mentioned sort of coming into this game. Cerberus, Bay, have both picked things up. Now, unfortunately, though, for MSC, it's only Yoshi Mimburi who remains. Does get a complete circle feed down to the south. So does Juxi and Ronan. In fact, Juxi got revived. Didn't even see that. In fact, is there three under there? I thought it was only actually Ronan, to be honest, but yeah, it looks like Juxi's up as well. Yeah, I think I'm pretty there certain is three. there's three. Yeah, there is. How did they manage that? Oh, Wait, no, there's only two. You're, you're trolling me. There's you're only two. Yeah. I swear it looked like there was three. No, I, I saw what you were seeing as well. It was right, like a yeah, little okay. arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, but, cool. Uh, well, I'm not that crazy. There is only two players alive. You can see it on the scoreboard on the left, Fury only has two, but two is better than one. And I did think that's there true. was only one that was going to survive, but it looks like the res has come across, so that's good news for Fury. And they're in a pretty good spot, all things considered. Oh. Buraram have absolutely sent it right at game home, and that's not worked out too well for them. Silphie does get God me out. Can actually very low on HP. This grenade isn't going to finish him off, but it's going to do a number to God me out, who actually does end up dying to a shot from Neferhort. Bay again, though. I, I just say it. They have just racked up kill after kill, stealing a majority of them from third-party position because they've got the entire south end of this zone to themselves. No one is contesting them. Flood now in the kill feed. Ten kills for Battle Arena Elites. Glorious, though, with a nice knockdown onto Kanaxi. Still one left. It's easy to deal with. Burem have been good. Haven't been as great as the Miramar games, but they're still alive. Seven kills now. I'll take oh. it back if he can get a second one. Oh, Edie gets God new. Sylphie and something else are the last two up for Game Home Esports. Looking for the first aid kit. Pushing closely into one versus two. Can get the quick transfer as well. They're so close to each other. Gets one. Couldn't get the oh. second. You're seriously almost... Oh! Up. Oh, the car blows up though. What's going on here in APAC? Game Home have been sent home. That's unbelievable. Oh, dearie me. Well, Buram, they get that little bit of a laugh at the end. Day Trade Gaming have two players left alive. They're keeping an eye on things and they've recognized, well, there's no one in the yellows anymore. I wonder why. Fury trying not to make too much of a ruckus, but they're still involved in the mix. And MSC sitting center circle. But really, Xenox, this is Bay's game to lose. All four players alive. They control the entire southern part of the map and they are fragging out. Division X fall to flood. Sixth place for them. Long K eliminated. What are we down to five teams remaining? Bay have got four up. Everyone else, Jordan, though, is completely wounded. One or two players alive. Norin's knocked. Loki's. It's Bay's game. I mentioned that they needed to turn things around. They have now done so. 11 kills currently. How many more can they get? They send us to the top four. Fury, Day Trade, Bay. And the solo of Yoshi Minburi for MSC Territon. Mm. Nurin's finished off. Bay will certainly be looking to get rid of day trade as early as possible here. Fury thinking much the same. MSC, not too much of a concern. They're quite far down on the, the scoreboard, but any extra point that day trade gets is going to put them further and further ahead of the rest of the pack. Mm. So they'd rather be seeing MSC picking up most of the points. In fact, everyone here. Apart from day trade, really wants to see day trade losing. They want to see day trade out in fourth. They do only have the one player. They've also got really the worst position as well. So Flash, I dare say, is going to have a, a difficult time of getting into the circle alive here. He's going to make his run. Let's see what he can manage. At the very least, there is a bit of hard cover for him to play with. But he's essentially banking on the, flat, the fact that maybe Flood or Sophia doesn't actually spot him. 
does feel like though Flash has got more to sort of try and gain here. You deny one point, but then you give everyone else the placement points. Or you stay alive and hope someone else gets knocked out before you and you then gain placement points and further increase the gap of your first place position. Fortunately, though, for Daedre, Bureau Ram Division X out of the game. Fury, though, are very close to being able to secure second place after three games and Bay has skyrocketed from the bottom four. What was that from Yoshi Mimburi? He shot more of the hay bale than he did Sophia. In fact, Sophia didn't take any damage. Mm. The, the, the hay bales have got some hitboxes there, Jordan. 14 kills now for Bay, and they're quite literally just sweeping the fields and cleaning up here for game yeah. three. There's no fear at all here for Sophia. Just pushing forward. Must know roughly the position of Flash because Bay did actually spot him out a little bit earlier on the piece. So expecting him to be just hiding somewhere on this ridge. And good comms, good awareness there from Sophia. And great stuff so far from Day Trade. They do manage to still secure, obviously, first place after this game. I don't think we're going to see Fury overtake them off of this, but Bay are the ones that are putting in the good work. Let's see whether or not Fury can spoil the party, but look at this crossfire uh, from Bay. It's just not, not from possible. Him. High ground, as you said, the crossfire, the numbers, everything says Bay wins this game, and they've thoroughly deserved it. Ronan needs to get an early knockdown onto Sophia, or at the very least, send him back. Has Jukesy in a good position to get that done? Loki's got to land these Ooh. shots, my friend, please! Land these shots! Are you serious? That could seriously backfire. Jukesy now has been able to heal up. This now means Ronan can also heal up, and it's a two versus three. Surely Bay haven't just lost it from there. Fortunately, Nefahor going for the revival Nades. of Sophia, so they are going to be able to get back to four up. Flood, super far back, has a slightly high elevation the loki's you've got to hit those shots ronan gets knocked down nephilhor saving the day gets the revive then the knock and says we're not losing this one we are not losing this one says nephilhor 17 kill win battle arena elites are on the board with their first chicken dinner at the pubg continental series yeah it's a little bit more like it for bay that was exactly what we've been waiting for Thought they really did start quite slow and to be fair they did start slow but when you bounce back with something like that you're not going to be too disappointed with how your day is going. They're right back up into fourth place, a 17 kill win. And that's just how hard the swings can be on day one when there isn't this massive amount of points already on the board. Single win.